Facts about every ability in Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2, Part 5. Did you know that with the help of Garlic Drone, you can fly yourself? In order to do this, it is a bit tricky therefore takes some practice and getting used to. But to execute this, you are going to want to use your drone and push yourself into any corner like this bush. Then you are going to want to keep pushing your character until it lands perfectly on your drone like this. The final thing that you have to do, is go up with the drone and move slowly to wherever you would like to go, as your character could fall off of the drone. If you need a bit more help on preforming this, I made a whole video on it, so go check it out if you're stuck. Anyways, I think flying on the drone can be really fun if you want to take a break from try-harding PVZ GW2 and I also think that it can actually be useful, as it can allow Cactus to get to places which are normally impossible to reach, giving you an advantage over everybody else. Once you learn how to fly yourself, it can be really fun in online matches, as people's reactions are really funny. With all that said, I will move on to the next fact. A bonus fact for Garlic Drone or any drone in general, is that if a drone makes contact with any mech, the drone instantly gets destroyed. I'm not sure as to why this happens, and only found this out recently. Tell me if you guys think that this was intentionally added into the game, or added by accident. Anyways, there's a cool and strange fact for you guys. Despite Artichoke's ability picture, showing that its propellers are green, if you use the actual ability, you can see that its propellers are not green, but a reddish color. I'm not sure why they did this, as in PVZ GW1 they did not make this mistake. One intriguing fact about Red Artichoke, is that if someone uses the Red Artichoke and then goes near you, you can see that it creates smoke every second or two, underneath it. This is strange and cool, as it's such a random but neat thing that the game developers added, as they completely didn't need to. This however, does not occur when using the normal Artichoke drone, so therefore is a unique feature to the Red Artichoke. A bonus fact for Red Artichoke, is that when looking at its picture for the ability, you can see that it presents Red Artichoke to have white teeth, whereas when using the ability, you can see that its teeth are actually red, to see it you have to look extremely closely. The game developers probably just forgot to make Red Artichoke's teeth white, as it is such a small thing and was not something on their need to do list. But nonetheless, that's a little but interesting fact for you guys. One odd fact for Dark Garlic Drone, is that it is the only plant that can kill itself with its primary weapon. To do this, you have to go near any wall or floor and shoot, this damages the drone. I don't know why this drone can do this and find it really strange. It doesn't make a difference to Dark Garlic Drone, as its shots are easy to land, so therefore you would not need to go near enemies to land your shots, which means you will not hit yourself with your own shots by accident. It would have made more sense for the game developers to have added this to every other drone, so people couldn't just go close to people and shoot them, if that was what they were trying to prevent, as the other drone's bullets are 10 times harder to land. An unusual fact for Tall Nut Battlement, is that did you know that you can make it go sideways? In order to do this, you are going to want to go on top of any slanted or rounded object or land, and then you are going to want to place down the tall nut at a certain angle. Sometimes the tall nut will go sideways, but sometimes it won't so you just have to keep trying. Putting your tall nut battlement sideways, gives you the best defense out of all the wall nuts, as no one can hit you or even see you when you are behind it. Just look at the amount of protection you get when using the tall nut normally and sideways. As you can see, the difference is immense, and you get way more protection when using it slanted, so therefore, if you main cactus, or just want to get good with him, I think that you should definitely learn how to do this. You may be saying, there aren't always going to be objects for me to place the tall nut battlement on, 
to do this trick, but I will show you how to make it go sideways almost anywhere. To make the tall nut battlement go sideways anywhere, you have to place either a potato or pizzazzling potato mine down. Then you are going to want to place the tall nut as close to on the side of the potato mine as possible. Since the potato mine is round, it should make the tall nut go tilted. But keep in mind that this is quite hard to pull off, so you are going to have to keep practicing. One fact for Iron Maiden, is that did you know that it gets completely destroyed by Engineer's jackhammer? In this clip, you will see that the jackhammer rapidly drains away Iron Maiden's health within seconds. This is really cool to me, and I don't know if PVZGW2 added this intentionally, tell me what you guys think, in the comments. With that said, I'll move on to the next fact. A bonus fact for Iron Maiden, is that in its description it refers to Iron Maiden as being a tall nut. This is peculiar, as when looking at the Iron Maiden up close, you can clearly tell that it is built much like a walnut rather than a tall nut. Here is a picture of both wall and tall nut, so that you can compare the two. Additionally, Bling Maiden is also referred to as a tall nut. I guess PVZGW2 don't learn from their mistakes. A cool fact about Bling Maiden, is that did you know that you can make an infinite staircase using it? Doing this is pretty simple, all you have to do is place a Bling Maiden down and then you have to stand on top of it. After that, you will need to place another Bling Maiden on the top of the already existing Bling Maiden. Then all you have to do, is repeat these two steps. One thing that I would like to say though, is that making the staircase can take a long amount of time since you have to wait for the Bling Maiden ability to be ready for each set of staircase you make, so I would suggest having YouTube or a game open while doing this. One abnormal fact for Blazon Blast, is that if you hit an enemy with it and then they die to the fire damage of Blazon Blast, then it will strangely say that you killed them with Flame Spray, which is Fire Chomper's primary weapon. Take a close look for yourself. I think that this is really odd, so can someone in the comments please explain this to me? Anyways, as you will be able to see, when I kill the enemy with the actual Blazon Blast and not the fire damage, only then will it say that I killed them with the Blazon Blast. I have my own explanation to this, I think that the fire damage that the Blazon Blast does, is the Fire Chomper's fire damage, hence why it says that I killed the enemy with Flame Spray, I could be completely wrong but that is my theory. Anyways, I wanna say a huge shout out to Imp53 for telling me this in the comments, it is very much appreciated. A weird fact for Smoldering Madness, is that if you enter any cannon and use the Smoldering Madness ability at the same time, this unusual glitch will occur, where Torchwood loses all of his flames at the top of his head. This looks really cursed, and it kind of feels like the Torchwood is bald without his flames, I definitely think that you should try this out, at least once, because it's really weird but cool at the same time. Additionally, if you would like to regain your flames, you just need to use the Smoldering Madness ability again, this will relight your flames and make them go back to normal. A fun fact for Leaf Shield, is that did you know that there was meant to be another ability that was meant to replace Leaf Shield? 
This ability was a dash but for the Torchwood. It was much like All Star's Sprint Tackle ability but did less damage so therefore had a shorter recharge of 15 seconds. I like the design of this ability and think that it would help Torchwood to get around the map faster, but I think that it would be too overpowered, as people would just be able to dash to a group of enemies and then use the Blazon Blast ability wiping almost everyone out. Also I think that it wouldn't fulfill Torchwood's purpose of being a tank, but that's just my opinion so tell me what you guys think. Speaking of Torchwood, if you would like to get teammates that are Torchwood in solo ops, then you have to pick any character to be your teammate, and then you will need to switch to them. After that, all you have to do, is respawn and equip Torchwood. Keep in mind that you have to have Torchwood unlocked to be able to do this. Okay guys, that is the end of the video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed. One thing that I would like to say, is that we are so close to the ginormous milestone of 1000 subscribers. Every single one of you matter, so please, if you would like to help me, make sure to like the video and subscribe, it means so much to me. On top of that, I just wanna say an enormous thank you to everybody for supporting me throughout this series. With all that said, have a great day and, bye.